Hi and welcome back. I'm so glad you're here because I want to show you how to apply chi-square analysis to Hardy Weinberg problems. So we can compare the populations, meaning we can compare the changes in the genetic makeup within the populations and see if those changes are statistically significant. So let's get started. We have a population of birds and they have three different beak sizes and a single gene with two alleles controls that phenotype. Allele big A is incompletely dominant to allele little a. So it means the genotype big A big A is going to give rise to long beaks. Big A little a is going to give rise to medium beaks and we have little a little a that's going to give rise to short beaks. So we have three genotypes and also three phenotypes. So the very first thing we do, we have to find the allele frequencies. So because all the genotypes are given to you, you do not have to do here the square root. Remember we talked about that previously in a previous lecture. So what you're going to have to do here is simply add those alleles because they are all given to you and you're going to get a much better, more accurate estimate of the, of the actual allele frequency. So how do we do this? So notice we have big A, big A, 90 of those. So, that, so that's the genotype. So it means we have 90 big A plus 90, because remember, genotype is made up of two alleles, so two big A's here. And then we also see one big A right here in a medium size beak, so we're going to have to add 45 and divide by a total number of alleles we have in the population. So since we have 150 genotypes, so 150 individuals, so that gives us 300 alleles total in the gene pool. And when we do the math here, we're going to get 0 0.75. I think I got that right. Okay, so now since we know the frequency of big A, that's your P. We can find the Q really quickly. So 1 minus 0.75 and that's going to give us 0.25 frequency for the Q. So we found the frequencies of the alleles within the given population. So the next thing we need to do, we need to determine the expected genotype frequencies under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So that means we have to take the allele frequencies that we just found and plug them into Hardy-Weinberg equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice this is my big A, big A. It's basically P square. And then we have big A little a composition here, that's the 2PQ, and then we have little a little a, here's your Q square, and then once we do the math, we're going to get this. So I'm going to just erase that so you can see it better. So we have the frequencies now that are expected under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So we have all that distribution here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to determine the actual counts because we cannot put the frequencies in the chi-square formula. So how do we do this? So we're going to take our current population and multiply by the expected genotype frequency. So we have 0.6, I mean 0.5, 0.5625. I'm keeping all my decimals because I like to round it at the very end. And then notice we are multiplying it by 150. That's the total population that we currently have. So the expected counts of organisms here are going to be 84. And then we have, so this is for type big A, big A with long beaks. And then we have 56 for medium beaks, and then we have nine for short beaks. So this is what we're going to use to be able to figure out and calculate the chi-square. Okay, so this is going to be next. 
So here's our chi-square formula, and you can see I adjusted the table. I have entered my expected values, actual counts. Remember, we cannot put any ratios, any percentages, any frequencies in this formula. We must use the actual counts of organisms here. So this is why we had to do it. So now we're going to go ahead and plug those values into the equation. But before we do that, we have to state our null hypothesis. Because after all, we're trying to compare two populations. We want to see if population is in Hardy-Weinberg or not. Is it evolving or not? So what would the null hypothesis sound like? So here's an example. There is no statistically significant difference between the observed and expected data. This population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, meaning this population is not evolving. So that is our null hypothesis. So now let's go ahead and calculate everything. So we're going to plug our observed values into the chi-square, and you can see this is the O, this is the E, then we have the square, this is the E right here, and we add everything up. And we are going to get a value of 6. So what do you do with this value? We are going to have to compare this value to the critical value, which we get from the chi-square distribution table. And you can see I have a little tiny snippet of that table here at the bottom. So, But before we can get that value from this table, we have to determine the degrees of freedom. So now, here is a catch, though. Up until this point, we did the chi-square problems and we always said the number of categories, to get the degrees of freedom, we're going to take the number of categories we have minus 1. So it would be n minus 1 and you're going to get your degrees of freedom. So technically here we have three categories. So this is your one category, another one, and the third one. However, this is going to be an exception to this rule. Not exactly, but here's the deal. Because only two alleles exist in this population, so we said that we have a dominant allele and recessive, even though in the way they come together they produce that medium, so it's like they are completely dominant, but still we have two alleles, big A and little a. So it means the presence of one allele, the frequency of one allele is going to determine the frequency of the, uh, the other allele. So it means Technically, we only have two alleles, so 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1 degree of freedom. This is what you have to keep in mind when you do your Hardy-Weinberg problems. Okay, so look at the number of alleles we have in the population. So we have 1 degree of freedom, and then we're going to select our p-value probability, probability of making an error. So 5% is going to be an acceptable value. So we'll look it up in the table. We have 0.05, 1 degree of freedom, and here's our critical value. So now we're going to compare our calculated chi-square value to the critical value and draw the conclusion. And as you already know, since the chi-square value is greater than the critical value, what do we say? We reject the null hypothesis, so it means the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The differences that we see between observed and expected data are statistically significant, so it means the population is evolving. Hope that helps. I'll see you in the next set of notes.